First of all, huge, huge meeting uh, coming at a time in history where Putin's on his hind legs in the war. He needs, he needs, um, he, he needs China. So Putin in 2015, when asked whether he had allies, he quoted Tsar Nicholas II. Oh, sorry, Tsar, Tsar Alexander II. Let me get my czars right. <laughs> uh, and he said, I have two allies, my army and my navy. Well, his military has failed him. Hmm. And without China's support one way or the other economically, but also indirectly militarily, as they said, working with the armed forces, uh, Putin will not be able to continue his war. Uh, with that support, he can continue it, and a war of attrition serves Putin. So it's absolutely crucial. The other thing that's worth saying is it's Putin's desperation meeting uh, Xi's opportunism. So they do get along, they do like each other, but Xi is getting some cut-rate energy prices. Hmm. He's going to get some new markets uh, that he'll pick up in Moscow, where uh, American companies, European companies, other companies have stepped away. So you're going to see a real shifting of tectonic plates economically. What are we to make of the reports that Ukraine is preparing for a big counteroffensive this spring? You know, they're amassing planes and uh, tanks and artillery. And if we know about this, surely Putin does as well. Yeah. Um, how much are the Chinese going to support that, while at the same time we're hearing reports that the Chinese leader is reaching out to Ukraine's president, possibly, for a meeting? It's, they tried to broker, I think, something in the Middle East recently that they might have done so successfully. So yeah. are they taking sides with Russia here, or, or are the Chinese simply trying to rival the U.S. in terms of kind of global power? I mean, let, let's be clear. Russia is not a neutral party in this war. Russia is on the side uh, of Putin. There are two reasons for this trip for Xi Jinping in three days three hours of meetings today. The one is to support Putin in this war so that he does not lose the war. Whether he wins it or not, at this point he's tying down Western troops, he's tying down the U.S., Western support, tying down the U.S. The second is to portray himself as a peacemaker, particularly the eyes of the global south, which doesn't really like this war. The one he's doing more in the shadows, the support, and the other he's doing more in the, in the light of day and more publicly. And that, those are the two reasons for But you trip. think China's direct interest is in Russia winning this war? I think direct interest in Russia not losing this war. Uh, and uh, because What's that the also... Difference? Uh, the, the winning this war means they get all of Ukraine. It means they get control over Ukraine as a sovereign country. Russia has put together a 12-point peace plan. And the first is respect for uh, ter territorial sovereignty and integrity. In the end, China will, it will be in China's interest that Ukraine survives, perhaps not with all of its, uh, of, all of its uh, territory back, but that the West does not get what it wants, which is a fully intact, fully sovereign, uh, fully free Ukraine. Because he then looks at Taiwan and wonders, well, if the porcupine strategy has worked for Ukraine, if Putin has failed in Ukraine, uh, my chances in Taiwan may be even more difficult. So he's taking lessons here for Taiwan as well. That's very interesting. So do you think Russia has a shot at actually winning here? And, and do you think Ukraine does as well? I mean, they are certainly preparing for a big counteroffensive. I, I forget exactly how the Ukrainian president put it, but he said this will be the year more or less of our victory. Um, how likely is that victory? So we'll talk about the Ukrainian side, then the Russian side. Ukraine is going to put together a major spring counteroffensive, and it's putting together everything it can to achieve that. So far, we're not delivering military support fast enough, ammunition fast enough, uh, long-range fires, uh, Reaper drones, uh, many of the things that they need, uh, they don't have enough of, uh, but they're going to go ahead with the offensive in any case. Part of the reason for that is that Putin is weak at the moment. And if they can get more territory, right now Putin has 20% of their territory. Until they win more territory, they can't get a good peace deal from Putin until he sees he can't win. From Putin's standpoint, a war of attrition serves him. The West gets fatigued. Ukraine gets fatigued. We get into our uh, U.S. elections where we're already seeing Governor, Governor, Governor DeSantis not supporting the war. It gets a little bit messier. So uh, Russia has to play for time. And Ukraine has to play for speed. Very well said. Fred, it's great to have you here, like we said, especially on a big day like this. We appreciate it.